Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to continue to take a look at the things that are new with Zim 016 right here. Uh, we've looked at shaders and if we go into the Zim 016, zimjazz.com and then press the Zim 016 up here. We've also had a look at the emitter tool right here and now we're going to go into this one which is pretty cool looking. Whoa, yeah, so we've got an animation that's following the mouse. I can stop that and I can press over here. Cool, huh? I can press over here. So what are we doing here? Uh, we also have, it, it's a tile, first of all. It's a tile and we have this strange looking bow where it's getting bigger in the middle and smaller at the edges. In the past, we've been able to take a tile and animate something in order, like uh, brrr, and then on this column, brrr, or on that row along the columns, this row along. And so we could sequence, that's called a sequence. And it sequences based on the index number or the layer number, whatever you want to call it, um, of the child in the container. We can also do a reverse sequence, and so that can go brrr, backwards but we didn't have it so that we could start in the middle and head outwards. Uh, as a matter of fact, we don't quite want a sequence there. All we want to do is adjust the rates of something, our animation, for instance, or we want to adjust the scale of something based on how far away it is from the center or how far away it is from the left or whatever it may be. It may not even be how far. It could be on its brightness or, or whatever. So we've called this normalized. And what we do is we take any property and uh, we tell that property, what are you comparing it to? And so if it's a distance from the center here, the ones that are at the center will get a one because they're the closest. The ones that are farther away will get a zero. So the corners would get a zero and then any ones in between here would have a ratio. So indeed, when you normalize based on um, the center location, each item in the container will get a ratio. And then we can use that ratio however we want. We could scale it based on the ratio. We can animate its speed. So that's what we're doing is we're changing the rate of the animation to cause this effect. Nice, huh? So things that are farther away are animating at a slower rate and things that are closer are uh, animating faster. And that animation has an elastic in it, which is giving it that effect naturally. All right, let's go take a look at some code. And um, one thing, we can go and look at the code and this is it. This is the code for that specific example. It has the normalizing, uh, well, okay, I was gonna, pop over and get some other code, but I will introduce this briefly then. Here is, we're bringing in Zim 016, so that's the latest version. You'll need this. The icon is just the icon, well, in this case, up at the top left corner. Um, we are, what's the rectangle doing here? Oh, the rectangle is added, I think, I'm not even sure why we had that. Perhaps it had something to do with we were testing a stage mouse down. Do we even need that anymore? Let's have a look. I guess not. No, I don't think so. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. We have a tile and we're tiling based on this size, 10, and we want 20 going off in both directions, I guess. That num is being here in the calls and rows. So that's calls and rows. That's the spacing between the tile. Here's the colors that it's going to make in a series. So that's us making a tile out of a rectangle of that size. Now we're normalizing it on the registration point, defaulting to center, and that will do it on both sides. So we're saying, um, how far away is the registration point from the center? And if it's at the center, it will get a ratio of one. And so here's where we're using the ratio. So this is the tiles ratio. Oh, why is it T? Because, uh, oh, right, we're looping through the tile. It's not the tiles ratio that we get. It's each element of the tile, which we call little t right there. So that's us getting the ratio of that. And we're setting the scale based on that. 
Uh, we'll come back to that because it's a little complicated. That's why I didn't want to look through this one first because this one's a little complicated looking. There's probably an easier one that we can look at it. We're also moving this to the mouse. So there's a, uh, a mouse move right there. On mobile, the mouse move doesn't quite work as well. So we wanted uh, just a stage mouse down on it, press. And, but we could have you know, finagled that differently, I'm, I'm sure. And then we're animating to the mouse position in a rate. So at that time, but the rate is changing based on the target's ratio. All right. So we did see an example of this being made here with Greensock. And we took a look at it and said, yes, we've seen Greensock now do a couple of their stagger animations. It's called based on central uh, situation. We always said to ourselves, oh, okay, all you have to do is rearrange our tile so that the things are in the center. Uh, so that the top, like the, the first ones are in the center. No, the, the opposite way around. Things in the center are first in the tile. But then that's a little bit tricky to do. You have to somehow apply an equation to rearrange those tile elements so that the ones in the center are come first. And even then, it didn't quite work with our sequence. Sequence was playing the ones in the middle, but then the ones in the later would come later, and it wasn't quite the same as changing the rate. So we realized we didn't quite have the equivalent. So we've actually set the sequence to zero there rather than the sequence time. Set the sequence to zero and adjusted the rate, and that's a different effect. So we had to introduce um, something new here, and that was that's what we're doing with normalize. In the end, uh, like I said, this is a bit more complicated code. Let's pop out and get some easier code to look at. And we can find that in the docs here, Zim docs. So on the Zim site, there's all these things. And we want to hit docs. And then you can either type in, in a search here, you could look for um, container. This uh, Normalize is a, is a method of a container. So you would search for not normalize, but you would search for the container and find it. Or we're going to hit updates right here. And in the updates, we'll scroll down. That's the shader. There's the tool. Here is normalize and ratio. And this one has a couple uh, more immediate, easier to see examples, including a visual example right here. So let's do that. We're going to copy this one. Boop, 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 boop. And we'll just copy the first part of it here. And I think this will be more visual for us to take a look at. Hopefully this doesn't turn into an explore, which is along or commenting out these other ones. I don't even think we need that rectangle there. All right, so all that stuff's commented out and we'll take a look and see what that gives us when we look at the code here. Uh, stop that. Tell you Microsoft, I never want that to happen. I should turn it off. Open a default browser. And there's what it makes us. It has a, a range of things. You can see that the one on the left is smaller, bigger, bigger, bigger. But then it starts to overlap like that. We've got a border on it. Overlaps. And these ones are up on top. So we haven't changed the stacking order of these. They're just scaling from the center. So let's see why it's doing that. We have a tile right here. We've set all of those rectangles to be registered in the center. We're normalizing on the X position. So before we even do any changing of scales, here's what it would look like. There they are. So that is a tile. Uh, there's nine of them. There's one, one row, nine columns, one row. 20 pixels spacing in between them. Normalizing won't do anything. All it does is say, give each of these items a ratio based on how far away its X property is compared to all the others from the center. And if it's in the center, then X would be one. If it's at the edge, if it's the farthest one away, then, or sorry, not X, but the ratio will be um, one. If it's farthest away, then the ratio would be zero. So if we were, oh, we've got a little comment in here. Uh, okay, let's bring that, let's make this alive. 
So now we're going to loop through the items. Ah, that's us setting the scale. So I'm not going to set the scale. Instead, I'm just going to look at what it's trying to tell me here. We're going to zog in yellow the items ratio. So we're looping through the tile to get each item to see its ratio. And we're taking off the decimals of that. And we'll see that we get, by default, it's one decimal place it's going to show us. And there they are. So this first one is zero, so that means it's not close to the middle. The middle one right here is one. And then the end one out here is zero again. And in between that ratio is going from zero to one. Zero to one, one to zero, because it's how far away we are from here. We can adjust that and tell the this thing to look to the right. <coughs> So now when it, or to the end, um, but now it goes zero because the left one's the farthest. And then the ratio is quite regular going here to one, one. This is zero and those ones all have a ratio of how far away. Now we could flip it and do the opposite. New center for now. Next, we're scaling the item based on that ratio. <coughs> Excuse me. So we just scaled the item based on the ratio, it would be 0 to 1, and you would get this. I can't even see these ones because their scale is 0. And that's 0, 0 on the end, and then here's the 1, so that's full scale. And these ones are 0 0.8, these ones are 0.5, and that was 0.3. Unfortunately, it's not changing the spacing in there, so that's another matter. We could probably do that based on the ratio somehow um, with moves or something. Anyway, what I've done here <clears throat> is made it twice as big and added 0.5 to the beginning. So that means we'll see all of them will be at least 0.5. So it'll be 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1, whatever, 1.3. Okay, but we're doubling that, so it would have been a bit more than that. And anyway, we end up with an effect like not like that. We save it first, and then we end up with an effect like so. Okay, um, not great looking, but what we've done here now, oh, we haven't done anything there. If we go back to our updates page and copy the rest of the code, is we've made an adjustment. So it's simpler to one degree, but on the other hand, we also are wanting to make an adjustment here. We're going to make a final tile based on the original items. So a tile can accept an array. And if we put a uh, unique true, that means we won't clone them. Otherwise, we would take that array. We would randomly pick from elements of the array and clone it sort of thing. And that's not really what we were wanting to do. That helps make art. But if we set the unique to true, that means it will, in a sense, pluck each of those items out and actually use that item. It won't bother cloning it. And it will do it in order as well. Then we say, all right, the number of calls is however many items we had. The number of rows is one. And our spacing, if we make this a positive 10, let's take a look and see what that looks like. So now we come back here. That's what it used to look like. Now we're going to retile these. And we have successfully, relatively successfully, put a spacing of 10 in between each one. There's the bigger. This is not really correct from a 3D standpoint. As these go off in the distance, the spacing would get smaller. And uh, if this were in the foreground, the spacing would be bigger here. Uh, but it's, it's visually close enough. It, I mean, it looks pretty decent. And then what we decided to do was make that a little bit different yet in bringing the spacing to a minus 10 to kind of hide the distance ones in behind there. But do you see what's happening? We still have the order of it, the, the layered order, is not adjusted. So how did we fix that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> why, is, why isn't it fixed? What happened? 
Uh, let's go back to the updates. Did we miss something? Oh, there's a sort by. Yes. Okay. So there's a final sort by the ratio. So create JS. Uh, we've just added sort by to be able to handle this issue. Create JS gave us a sort children method. So we can sort the children of a container by any by a sort function, much like in JavaScript, raw JavaScript, you can sort an array by some function. And what that does is it goes through and it compares. If this is bigger than that, then it puts it here. If this is bigger than that, then it puts it there. And it's a little bit tricky to make that function. You have to have three parts to it because there's also a zero. What if they're the same? And there's a certain format to the parameters that are kind of mystical-ish looking. So it's not the most pleasant thing to do. So we brought that into Zim with a sort by the props. So what prop do you want to sort the container by? There's also an inverse that will uh, invert that. So let's have a look at the sort by right here. Might as well keep that in there. You having fun? This is almost like an explorer. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I hope we don't turn this into an explorer. Uh, we are disposing the original tile because once we've done this, once we made this tile and put put the right sizes to it, our final tile has just plucked all those items out of there. And so it's not, this tile doesn't even have any items left in it, so we get rid of it. So we're now working with our final tile that has this space. This is, uh, this is the first way that we did it. We, we did actually adjust the spacing with the ratio and said, ah, this is harder. Let's just retile it. And then we can put the spacing in there and we don't have to do any math. <laughs> So here's our retile is actually easier than it was uh, the, uh, the other way. So we dispose of the original tile, and now we're going to sort by the ratio. Because recall, if we sort by the ratio, these ones are bigger. So that means these container items are going to come up above these ones, which will go in behind. And are you ready? Here's what we get. Bingo. Now the ones it, that are bigger in ratio are up top. We could have actually at that point also sorted based on scale, but no need to. We can just do the ratio. And then these ones are in behind. Can you imagine what it would be, what it would look like if we reverse that? Negative one. The ones that are bigger would go behind, and the ones that are on the ends would go in front. And doesn't that look backwards? <laughs> well, it looks like some sort of robot structure or something. So now the ones that are smaller are up higher in the container, and the ones that are, had a bigger number are lower in the container. Cool, huh? Yay, Zim! <laughs> and a shout out, yay, Create Jazz, for allowing us to be able to sort, sort those out. Did I save that? <laughs> what happened? What happened? Refresh. It's not refreshing. Uh, ratio, uh, oh, this should be um, false. <laughs> okay, that one. So we don't need it. So by default, we want to turn that off. And now we're back to how we like it. Woohoo! All right, so now we know some of the things about uh, the ratio and the normalize. And if we come back down into here, perhaps we should even leave this in there, comment it out, why not? There is another basic one that might be good to look at. How are we doing for time? Oh, I don't know. That time's not going to tell me. It's going to be more like how long have we been doing this? 20 minutes, 18 minutes? Okay, we can take a look at this other one that's, that's here as well. So up above, we have a simplified version of that animated one. So I'm going to copy that. And I'll paste the simplified version of the animated one in here. All right. And let's see what that was doing. Do we still have the other one commented out? Yep. Okay, so here we go. Come back here, close that, and refresh. Ooh, nice, huh? Brown. So that's animating in with that effect. Note that we didn't adjust the scale of that, but we are changing the rate of animation of each of these little things. And that gives us that time-delayed effect. 
All right, so here we are. There's our tile. It looks roughly the same as it did before. We're normalizing based on the registration point. Oh, uh, one trick that the registration point, when we normalize based on the registration point, it actually changes the registration points of all of the items. So that it, instead of the registration point of this item being in the center, if, if, if that's how we started it, or top left corner if we didn't, instead of each one having its own registration point, they get moved to the center of the tile. So now the registration point of this is at the center. The registration point of this is at the center. The registration point of any of these is at the center. If we said center right, then the registrations would all be centered horizontal, or sorry, center here. No, it wouldn't be center right, it would be center top. So center top or center bottom or right center. So right center would be here, bing. Okay, registration right center right there. Then all the registration points would be at this location. Should we see what that looks like? So we said, let's put them at the right comma and then the center and now we're going to animate in. So all these ones animated first and these ones animated more slowly. It's kind of cool, isn't it? It's like, um, what would you call that? Uh, it's like a flag almost. I don't know why they all, why it all shifted over. Let's see why. We normalized to the right then we centered it, then we animated. I think we're scaling it all off to the, yeah, are they scaling all bigger? And then it's scaling from the right hand side. So we wouldn't want to center it, we would. So when it's centered and we change the scale, it all the registration point was in the center. But here, uh, here, um, this was what the original one looked like. It was about that big. And then we changed the scale to all of it be twice as big. <laughs> so it scaled off that way. So we'd have to I don't know, deal with that somehow. Not sure exactly how. Anyway, we do, if we did it the left, we'd see that same thing with problem, or same thing would happen, but it would go up too much to the left or the other way. So now the original box is here. So with no animation, this is what we're seeing. Watch that, ready? There's our original box. But if we scale, if the registration point gets put here and we scale everything bigger to the right, then everything is moving off to the right or to the left, whichever way we uh, did it. It's kind of like the opposite. Okay, so instead of that, we're doing the center. So by default, that would be in the center. And that's a little bit different than our X that we had before. When we only do the X, it just leaves the registration point where they were, uh, where it is, or you know, where, it, where it was. It's only when we do reg that that specially comes into place. All right, and that allows us to make this effect right here, blob, because the registration point will need to be in there as we animate these various parts. Otherwise, it, it doesn't work. Cool. And then the answer, or the final answer, although let's undo that and do all of these like so. Uh, the final answer was this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. And I really don't think that we need this interstellar thing. Let's try it. I was trying some stuff based on I was wondering if pressing on a stage versus not pressing on a stage made any difference. Here we don't have any stage. Okay, here we go. It was actually uh, an issue of something on mobile. The An ad event listener mouse down wasn't triggering. We need an ad event listener pointer events or something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but Zim and CreateJS have pointer events built into it, so that worked out to be fine. Nice, huh? So that's got some extra stuff in it, but in general, the same things are happening. We're subtly adjusting the scale. So here's the loop through it. If we didn't do this loop right here, and we'll come back and take a look at that loop in just a sec, 
But if we didn't do that loop, you see the bow or the bend in our grid, then it doesn't get that. It still looks fine, but it's, uh, it's a, an exact tile. Brown. Okay. Exact tile. I kind of like the bow. And what we're doing is we're looping through the tile. We're getting the, each element of the tile plus uh, the index number. And we're scaling it. We don't even need the index number, do we? No, I'm not using the index number. So just get each element of the tile there. And we're scaling that element of the tile at least one plus whatever the, um, the ratio is divided by uh, five. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sorry. VS Code should be sorry. I hate it when something's selected and you try and reselect somewhere, it ends up dragging it, but I could probably turn that off somehow. However, on the other hand, I sometimes do like to select something and drag it. <laughs> so it's a no-win situation. That's understandable. Uh, here is much more of a bow. It's almost like a ball, isn't it? Which looks kind of cool, too. But I don't think when you press it here, I don't think you can see the effect quite as nicely. It's sort of nice pulling it along is interesting, but you don't get quite as uh, nice of a, an effect otherwise. So we divided by five there to turn that ratio to be a bit smaller. So we get a more of a subtle bow on that. It's almost like a net, isn't it? And that allows me to see the inner, the inner circles of that as, as we go. Ready? Bang. And kind of see the inner circles of it animating. Alrighty. I think that's probably enough to say about the new normalize. It's on any container. So you can have a container of your own stuff. Tile happens to be a container too. So we're normalizing it. You can normalize based on... Uh, I think any property, as far as I know. And that is, uh, here we are doing X. And if you normalize on a registration point, then it will actually move those to the place you've normalized. Whereas if you just do X and Y, it won't. And remember, you can do rotation and other things like that too. Okay, I am Dr. Abstract here at zimjs.com. Uh-oh. I'm working locally, and I guess it couldn't pick that up, but here at <laughs> zimjs.com, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Ta-da! Nothing like a showing a broken error in like the last 10 seconds of your video, but whatever. We're here at zimjs.com, where you can find out all the new things there. You can also join us at Discord and Slack, although we're starting a new forum soon to replace Slack. We'll still be at Discord. And remember that you can... Freak yourself out, Wah! or not, not at all, no motion, if you, if you don't want. Okay, you're going to do that little adjust there. We'll see you around for the next bubblings. Yay! Have a great day or night. And um, <laughs> here we go.